1% is what Spain is saying now. No great uh, surprises. Most are expecting negative 1.5. Exactly. Um, I think in some ways it's uh, probably a little bit optimistic from Spain's point of view, but ultimately it does set the scene and possibly a precedent for the other Eurozone countries that maybe a concentration on growth needs to be put forward rather than these deficit measures. Uh, we're already seeing the fallout of this in relation to the unemployment numbers in Spain, which are at record highs. You've got 27 percent expected for the year, and of course youth, youth unemployment is an awful lot higher than that. And then of course the overall Eurozone unemployment number is expected to come in at another record high of 12 percent today. Uh, so I think a focus on growth is what is probably necessary for the whole Eurozone, not just Spain. Um, manufacturing PMIs out at uh, nine, um, how, uh, I say grim reading, is it going to make grim reading for you as well, do you think? Well, the whole Eurozone manufacturing um, has been in uh, contraction territory for, the, for 19 months running. So I think in some respects we can't expect to get, get an awful lot more out of Spain either. Even Ireland, which has been booking the trend for the last uh, number of months, it came in contraction territory today below that 50, 50 mark. So I think it will probably come in lower than expected, probably in around the 45 mark for Spain. Um, quick word on Cyprus. They're going to get this extra year to reach a primary uh, budget surplus 4%. Uh, is that going to make any difference? I think the uncertainty that lies there in relation to depositors and of course this capital controls that we have in place for Cypriot banks remains a bit of a problem for investors and of course the entire economy of, of Cyprus at, at the moment. It is supposed to last for just seven days and be lifted uh, later this week but if they extend that I think that might actually make things a little bit, an awful lot worse and of course that contagion factor that we have seen from the very beginning of the, the Eurozone crisis could fall, uh, f follow its way to the likes of Spain and of course make uh, and hamper any kind of moves that they've made in the right direction in respect of deposits and of course uh, capital tier one ratios. And, and just to finish up with as, a, as an investor how, how do you play all of the above? Uh, clearly volumes were low yesterday, Europe was out, um, what's it going to look like this week? I think it's going to be a little bit more cautious. You've obviously got non-farm payrolls this week. We also have the ECB meeting. And I think what, what will need to be watched very closely, given that the euro has bounced a little bit off that four-month low against the US dollar, is to see exactly what Draghi will say. There are uh, plenty of people who would say that maybe a, a rate cut might actually take effect. But I would discount this. I would discount the actual uh, benefits that this would actually bring. But ultimately, it's what Draghi can do to try and counteract what Daisy Bloom has been saying over the last number of weeks. Uh, and I think he's got a very, tall, a, a very tall order there, considering that he was hoping to do everything it took to save the euro back in September. Now we need to see some action rather than some words.